Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint. Now it's time to join Jeremy Ford as he discovers the hit and miss joys of splodging. I'm going to show you one of my favourite techniques which I call splodging. Uh, it's like dry brushwork in uh, watercolour, so you want uh, any round brush and watercolour paint that's not very watery. So just uh, dip your brush in the water, just get a little bit of, of colour, uh, sorry, a little bit of water, not much, and let's get a, a bit of brown, burnt sienna, and a little bit of phthalo blue. So we've got a nice green, and we want a bit more burnt sienna in that. And a little bit of cadmium yellow. So we've got a, a sort of mid-green. And if you use the whole of the brush, you touch the whole of the brush on. So it hits and misses the paper. You can do this on any paper, uh, the more textured the paper, the uh, easier it is, but you can do it on a dry, uh, sorry, you can do it on a smoother paper, you just need to use the paint a little bit drier. Uh, so that gives you a nice sort of broken effect. Just put a little bit more colour in that. And uh, so we've got a, a tree like that. Maybe just add a little bit of uh, paler green while well, that's I'm in and amongst what I've done there. So that's using a damp brush. It's using the whole of the body, not just the tip, and dragging it a little bit so you get that broken effect. It's great for foliage. So maybe for um, uh, summer trees, you know, like that. Um, and also for winter trees, if I use... Um, a brown, let's make that into a brown, brownish grey. So you can drag the brush downwards like that for a winter effect and then use the paint slightly wetter for the tree trunk and any other branches that you want to do. It takes a bit of practice to get the consistency right because if your brush is too wet and you put that on, you get a too solid a stroke. So get rid of some of it onto a piece of kitchen roll and spread it out a bit so it's broken. So that's using it uh, for things like trees. Uh, also for a hedge, you know, if you can imagine uh, a hedge there, that's a bit wet, get rid of some of the colour and use the whole body of the brush like that so you've got a broken hedge and if you wanted to then you could also add a few bits lower down. Using the same technique, it's placing the whole body of the brush on. Um, and you can all use it for other things as well. Um, I also used it in uh, water. So if you had a uh, mix of sea colour, you can imagine some uh, nice deep blue sea. Here we are. And we're coming down towards a wave. Now as I run out of paint at the bottom of that line, get rid of what's on your brush and use that dry brush effect again so it hits and misses. Underneath that, use that splodging. Maybe add a little bit of uh, slightly darker, deeper colour while that's wet. Get rid of what's on the brush. And you've got the roll, if you like, of the, uh, the white. Got that break, breaking wave. And um, so you can use that for all kinds of different things. Maybe just make that a little bit darker underneath while it's still wet. 
gives you quite a nice um, uh, effect. So for foliage, summer, winter, hedges, see, you can also use the texture, uh, say on stone, um, on uh, shingle, shale, beaches, anything like that. Again, dry brush, get rid of most of the colour um, and touch the brush down. This brush is almost dry here, but you might just be able to, to see how that hit and miss effect is creating the effect of shale or shingle. And you could do that on white paper or you could do it over a base. You know, you could perhaps put a sandy colour down first of all and then do that on top. And you could keep on building up the strength uh, or the dark darkness of that tone, gradually getting a little bit darker. You've just got to be a little bit careful that you don't have your brush too wet. That's the main thing. So get rid of some onto a piece of kitchen roll. Kitchen roll is very important stuff. I can't paint without it. Um, it's so helpful. So keep on, um, you know, building that up. And you could do that uh, in several layers, you know, if you want to get uh, effects of stone and dragging a brush as well. You can use, use that for all kinds of things. It's splodging or dragging a dry brush. It's easier on a textured paper, but you can do it on any paper, even on a smooth paper. You just need to use the paint a bit drier. So I hope you found that one useful and that you might be able to use it in your own pictures. Thanks Jeremy, splodging is a really useful technique to try. The hit and miss areas of paint is perfect for creating realistic foliage, hedges and trees. Now let's go to the SAA library and join our resident bookworm Henry Malt for a closer look at Jeff Kerr's watercolour journey around the Peak District. Today's book is The Peak District in Watercolour by Jeff Kersey. This is not a book that I would say is a educational book, is it? Not in the slightest. Um, it is what it says it is. It's paintings of the Peak District done in watercolour by Jeff Kersey. With a few nice random With sketches. With a few very nice little, in. very nice little random sketches. Excellent, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, somebody should do a book on sketching with Jeff, actually, I think, yeah. on the basis of that. It's nice, isn't it, actually? So it's the sketch that led into the painting, I assume. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously Jeff's paintings are fantastic, but it's, I think a lot of people are used to seeing a book from Jeff that shows you how to produce the picture. So uh, how do you think this book fits into the marketplace? Does it fit in well? I suspect that actually, if you've bought a lot of his instructional books, you might very well think, I'd love to see how he paints. Yeah. And you've got a whole book of it there. Yeah. I would quite wish that it had been done in a landscape format, I think. Because, because they're landscape the... paintings and yeah, absolutely. you take that. I mean, it's very nice to have those yeah. little drawings. And I'm way. very glad, that, yeah, Being I'm nice. very glad that they're there. Yeah. But once in a while, it would have been nice not to have to fill the white space. Yeah, it's quite a... a bit picky, that, but, you know. It's quite a straightforward book as well, the design and layout of it's very yeah. clean and crisp. Do you like that? Or do you like something with a bit more graphical things happening? Oh, I think you can get fussy and... You can make it over I mean, I suppose if I was going to do it, I might have had a few more words and put bits about the lake, the, the Peak District. Mm. Um, but that isn't what he did. And, you know, it's a bit unfair to... Criticise the poor bloke for doing a book of his paintings. Then say, oh, I wish I hadn't done a book of your paintings. <laughs> it's, a nice, uh, it's a nice way, I suppose, for Jeff. It, it, it's kind of showing off what he can do a little bit as well, which is nice. It's a showcase of his work. It and is, it yeah, absolutely it's good, yeah. works as yeah. that. Um, and if you like the, the Peak District, and why wouldn't you? Yeah. Then, goodness, you know. Yeah. But it's, it's nice for me because I'm kind of from this area as well. So it's nice looking through as we're talking. I'm recognising the places without even looking at the words, which is nice. Well, that's, that's a fine quality in a landscape it's painting, a, actually. It's almost like having the, um, having the postcard of the place, which is great, really. Yeah. And I imagine for tourists to the Peak District, it'd be a nice little buy as well. I would think that's mainly what it's intended for, to be yeah. honest. And good luck to him. Yeah, well, thanks again for that, Emery. We'll see you very soon. <laughs> thanks. Jeff's crisp and clean paintings certainly celebrate the diverse and beautiful landscapes of this picturesque area in a stunning book that showcases Jeff's amazing talent 
packed with light and colour. Okay, time for our final break now, folks. But join us in part four when we rejoin innovative SAA artist Paul Beatty as he prepares to add the finishing highlights to today's Try Your Hand That project. And I'll be answering a few more of your questions from the Splashy Paint Post bag. Join us after the break. <laughs> 